to welcome you to the Gun Memorial Library and Museum. I'm Stephen Hartkus, the curator of the Gun Museum, which is located next door to the library. Um, for those of you um, that are new to the gun, um, this is our lecture space, and we have a very special um, program this evening. And um, Tony Diana um, from Insight Paranormal Agency, um, he's the founder of Insight Paranormal Agency, uh, recently conducted a paranormal investigation of this building, uh, which you're sitting in right now, the library, and the museum next door. Um, so he's going to talk about um, that process and what they discovered, and um, he's also investigated other sites throughout Connecticut, so he's going to talk about those this evening. And um, if anyone brought um, their own paranormal um, experiences, you could you can mention those tonight as well. And um, before we get started, I want to mention that um, we're having our second annual cemetery tour tomorrow night. Um, it's free and open to the public, and um, I encourage you all to uh, come back for that. It uh, goes from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., and tour guides will depart um, every 10 minutes from the museum next door, and um, we will have a path of luminary bags stretching from the museum to the end of the cemetery, and people will be positioned in the cemetery uh, next to um, gravestones telling uh, the tales of people that are buried beneath that. Um, so that is tomorrow night, and um, we also have an um, exhibition of funeral artifacts um, at the museum. Um, it'll be a special exhibition that will only be on display tomorrow night, so you'll be able to take a look at that as well. And we have um, a storyteller telling uh, spooky stories at the museum too. So this all happens tomorrow night from 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m., so um, please come back. And I'm going to put some of these posters out on the table. And there's also a sign-in sheet. If you haven't already signed in, um, if you'd like to leave your email address, um, we'll email you when we have uh, future programs and um, exhibits and things like that. So Tony, Diana, welcome. Thank you. How are we all doing tonight? Good. Fantastic. The best thing about the opportunity to get to speak to you tonight is that it takes place two days before Halloween. Halloween is my absolute favorite holiday. No, it's not because I'm a ghost hunter. It's my favorite holiday ever since I was a kid. I can remember being 10 years old, and I believe I was wearing a Darth Vader mask or something, but I was walking through the streets of my town, and my feet were crunching on the leaves in the autumn, and I felt the cool, you know, that nice cool wind you get in the autumn, you get that nice smell in your, in your nostrils, you just love it, and I think I fell in love with that smell ever since when the weather changed from summer to winter. But the other great thing about that smell was that there's always a mystery to it to me. There's always like, there's something different about the air, and I didn't know at the young age, but I always felt like there was something hiding behind it. And I think that's sort of what started my uh, curiosity into the paranormal. What's on the other side? How does it all work? And the more I went into it, believe it or not, the less I discovered, and I ended up with more questions. But what I'd like to share with you tonight is a little bit about ourselves, some of our investigations, and some of the things we use, and um, hopefully it'll be educational. We are Insight Paranormal Agency. We're from Stafford Springs, Connecticut. And we're made up out of a group of passionate volunteers who have a very, very strong sense of curiosity about the other side. And the people who inhabit our group come from a large variety of uh, large walks of life. Inside of our group, we have myself, my actual main occupation. I'm a film composer um, and a photographer. That's what I do to We also have people in our group, someone who's in the National Guard. We have a psychologist. We have a school teacher. We have a house mom. So really, it's just a wide swath of different people who are interested in the paranormal. And I'm sure if I went through everyone here, we'd find out that we all come from different backgrounds. And that's really one of the most interesting things about paranormal is that it can really cross-section a, a large group of people. But we got started about three years ago, and it actually got started on sort of a, um, I, I want to say joke, but it really wasn't. Me and my daughter were actually uh, throwing a Halloween party, because we throw them every year, and we decided we wanted to do something with, you know, ghosts and paranormal stuff. So we took our digital recorder out into the cemetery, and just for fun, we started asking questions. When we got back home, there were voices on the tapes that were not ours. And while we were in the cemetery, somebody whispered hello in my daughter's ear. She took off like a back of a car. <laughs> in any event, once we found them, 
I was actually shocked because I'd always believed in ghosts. I always, you know, I embraced the supernatural. I got interested in, you know, tarot cards and stuff like that when you're young. You know, a lot of 16 year olds do. It's perfectly natural. I abandoned it. But what was really was being confronted with the truth on here. And I'm going to be talking about personal experiences later. And those, those are very, very moving things, personal experiences. But when I heard them, it was like the realization of what I thought I knew is real. I was like, you know, there's got to be something to this. There really has to be. And I, I'm curious. Because one of the other things I've always had in my life is a very strong preoccupation with death. Now, I don't know if there's anyone else here who's afraid of dying. Some people aren't, some people are. And it's 50 50. I had a very strong, gripping fear of death. And I wanted to know what happens when the lights go out. Where do I go? What becomes of me? And that's really my driving force for starting the group. Because once I got the voices, I started grappling with this death issue, and I was like, I want to find out. So I talked to my daughter. She thought it was a good idea. Mind you, she was only 15 at the time. But she was into it at the time. But we met at someone else, Steve Bednar. He's with the military. He, uh, he's a friend of mine. He's also very, very into the paranormal. And I said, hey, what do you think once a month we go around and we start investigating places? It'll be a great hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that once a month turned into once a month. Then a call for an investigation, then another, then another, then it turned into once a week thing. So we got a little busy, so we actually made an agency. So here we are now, lecturing in front of you fine people, to tell you our story. But as far as other members on our team, we have actually my wife over here, Allison Diana. She's our team researcher. Allison has a very keen and disciplined mind when it comes to research. She can track down just about anything, and this is no exaggeration. She's a writer, writer by trade. She writes romance novels, but it also gives her a great scope for the imagination for doing our research. So if I give her an address to a case we're studying, Allison can go back and find out the entire history for us, which is actually invaluable. Hopefully I'll be able to touch on that later. Also in our group, we have um, Andrew Robel. He's actually a psychologist who works up in Rhode Island. Now, psychology is also extremely important in paranormal uh, research because some people People want to find out about things for different reasons. Some people who are like, there's something in my house, I would like to know what it is. Some people are like, there's something in my house, I want it out. <laughs> and there are other people who are like, oh, yeah, there's something in my house, give me more attention. You know, just attention to your stuff. And Andrew's great for having that because he can actually read the person for me and tell me whether or not, you know, are they on the level, do they really have a problem, or is their problem actually something more personal. And that comes back to why we do it. The other reason, one of the biggest reasons we do it is to help people. Because every case we do, we learn something. So that's very self-gratifying. But at the same time, if we go into a homeowner's home and actually figure out what's going on, it's like, hey, guess what? You don't have a ghost in your house. You've got a squirrel on your wall. You're good. <laughs> you know, we've helped them. We've given them peace of mind. Or it's like, hey, guess what? Oh, yeah, you do have a ghost, but don't worry, it's your Uncle Marty, he just wants to know where the beer is, it's all there, just give him beer and he'll go away, you know. <laughs> and sometimes we can't figure it out, and we have to keep on going. But the point is, in the process, from just my simple curiosity, and a couple of other people's performance, we've actually helped people. It's, it's, it's awesome. We, had, um, we did a spot with Better, Better Connecticut last year on Channel 3, and we went up to this woman's house in um, Coventry. And what happened was, she felt like she was being watched at night. She felt like there were voices talking to her. She felt paranoid. And so we went in there, along with my sister Angelina Diana, who's a psychic medium, and we actually investigated. And what's really interesting is, as we were investigating the house, we were doing our EVP searches, and I'll explain all that after, but what happened was, uh, Steve was over by the fish tank, and he said that the fish tank was giving off a high EMF level. I'll explain the EMS after, but basically, the, the generator on the fish tank was in, in, generating an enormous amount of energy. And what happened was the fish tank is right in front of where she sleeps. And behind the fish tank is her shower. So in other words, between the morning, when she showered, and when she went to bed at night, she's being assaulted by high levels of electromagnetic field energy. The stuff that's in all electronic components. 